Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Jick. I am a board-certified OBGYN physician, and I have been in practice for 30 years. I am here today to talk to you about delayed cord clamping and cord blood collection. The birth of a child is a special occasion in every family's life, one in which many families invest months of preparation and planning. There are important decisions to be made about the birth plan, and the practice of delayed cord clamping is one for which guidance has continued to evolve over time. Many healthcare providers practice clamping and cutting the cord quickly following birth, generally within the first 15 to 20 seconds. However, recent evidence suggests that delaying the clamping and cutting of a newborn's umbilical cord may be beneficial to the newborn. Hence the concept delayed cord clamping, sometimes called DCC. Delayed cord clamping is typically defined as waiting 30 to 60 seconds or longer after birth before the cord is clamped and cut. The benefits of delayed cord clamping are clearly understood in premature births. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, or ACOG, recommends delaying the clamping and cutting of the cord in babies born before 34 weeks, in part to reduce the risk of complications of premature birth. While the potential long-term benefits of delayed cord clamping in term babies is not as well understood, we know that delayed cord clamping increases blood levels in the newborn and improves their iron stores in the first months of life. ACOG now does recommend a delay of clamping the cord for at least 30 to 60 seconds in most newborns, including full term, unless there is a medical contraindication. We know that the value of cord blood is far more than just the timing of clamping of the cord. Cord blood is a rich source of stem cells, which can be collected, preserved, and stored for potential future medical uses. Currently, stem cell transplants can be used in the treatment of more than 80 medical conditions. There have been more than 35,000 stem cell transplants worldwide using cord blood stem cells, stored in both public and private family cord blood banks. Clinical trials using cord blood and cord tissue stem cells are currently looking to reveal ways they may play a role in regenerative medicine. Research hope to find new approaches to healing the body using the stem cell's natural abilities to help tissue repair and regenerate. Expecting families can preserve cord blood stem cells with a family bank exclusively for their family's potential future use or donate to a public bank for use by a patient in need. One of the most commonly asked questions relating to delayed cord clamping is if you can perform delayed cord clamping even when you are doing a cord blood collection as well. These families should know that it is possible to bank cord blood even if cord clamping is delayed. Cord blood volume varies between babies. Bigger babies tend to have more cord blood and smaller babies tend to have less. When you have babies with more cord blood to begin with, there may be enough blood for delayed cord clamping to benefit the baby and also enough to collect for potential future use. But those newborns with lower initial volumes of cord blood may not be able to have it both ways. In the setting of delayed cord clamping, the delay should be long enough to allow some of the blood in the cord to flow to the baby, but not too long that it would then no longer be possible to collect enough cord blood for future use. The compromise is that studies suggest a minimum delay of about 30 seconds to accomplish both goals. However, it is important that parents develop an individual plan with their health care provider. When considering delayed cord clamping and cord blood collection, families should discuss their birth plan in advance with their health care provider. If families are interested in public donation, it's important to know that public banks have different requirements compared to family banks. Public cord blood banks often will only accept cord blood donations with higher collection volumes. It turns out that high stem cell counts are needed in current transplant procedures. When cord clamping is delayed following birth, the chance that there is enough cord blood to meet all these requirements decreases. Therefore, delayed cord clamping might prevent a donation from being accepted with a public bank. Cord blood collection size is not necessarily a barrier to storing cord blood with a family bank. The collected units are for a family's exclusive use and often used for autologous applications in children, therefore smaller cord blood units can be acceptable. There may be more uses for smaller cord blood units in the future, 
as there is a lot of research being done today in the fields of regenerative cellular therapy and in cord blood stem cell expansion. I hope I've been able to give you some additional information to help you in trying to decide about preserving cord blood with a family bank or donating cord blood to a public bank and also arranging for delayed cord clamping at the time of birth. Thank you for your time.